What do you think, Jay? Keep smuggling. Great idea, princess. Diving into a pile of garbage. Hey, when we get out of here, maybe you can show me around your home planet of Alderaan. Oh, too soon. Hello there. It's Discard to Reroll, where a podcast about a little dice and card game we all you and I like to call Star Wars Destiny. I'm your host, Mr. Tip, and thank you so much for listening. Today, let me just tell you something. Wherever you are in the world, whether you are in the sun of Australia or the cold of New York, which it is negative a million today uh, as we head into 2018, you need to just stop what you're doing. We've got great content coming your way. And I know that because finally, back from, I think he was on a three-week vacation, sunning in some place in one of the Carolinas, it's Jay from Double Blanks. Jay, welcome back. Have you heard of Star Wars Destiny before, and have you ever played it? Uh, I've played it once or twice, Mr. Chip. Not not, not a whole lot, you know. I I, I dabble. I dabble in it a little bit. You were off the grid. My grandmother texted me more, and God rest her soul, she's been dead for two years. Well, you've totally unplugged from Star Wars Destiny. Did you enjoy your break? I did. I had a blast. And it wasn't like, I because I played a draft while I was gone. I just was out of town at my parents, visiting yeah. family and all that stuff. And I didn't have my computer to play TTS and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't me like taking a break from Destiny. Yeah. It's just I was out of town. I think it's like your whole life is streamed online. So I think when you're off YouTube for five days, people panic. So it's, I'm glad to know that, A, you're still okay. So you can return the flowers, apologize to your fiance. And B, uh, you did play some uh, some draft with your family. You enjoyed that, you said? Oh, it was an absolute blast. Yeah, it's uh, you've been helping me through that. And it's good. it's just good to have you back. You know, I was all alone last week. <laughs> all alone and we talked all about tokens i got so i have so much to tell you it's just it's i don't know if we can fit it into an hour and you also have some other cool news that you just told me i don't know if i should be nervous or excited about transformers but maybe that's a whole new podcast that i have to start but today here's what we're going to do first uh i've been putting together some uh, some values on cards and thinking about what it is to be competitive. We're calling it the cost of being competitive. Looking at those top decks, Jay, that I know that you play all the time now on TTS, but that <laughs> that everyone talks about uh, in playing, whether it's R2P2 or the the uh, the Kanan build of your choice was a Qui-Gon Kanan and all those decks that are out there, five dice villain. How much do these decks actually cost to make? Um, you know, not everyone's a crazy collector like me. You could be like Jay who has seven cards uh, or, or Chris from Double Blanks who has his cards and puts them in a trash can either way (laughs) you have to build these decks when you're going to play competitively outside of tts and how much does do those actually cost and is there value there so we want to talk about that uh it's a big big week next week for players in the u.s it's january 11th jay and legacies finally drop so you pumped for that oh i'm extremely pumped for it um it's not i like the way the meta is right now don't get me wrong about that, but when you haven't had a set, when was when did uh, Empire at War drop? Like three months ago? Yeah, it, four, has it been that long ago? now? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yep. It it kind of starts to get stale a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm definitely ready for something new. You know, it's interesting about that is that I feel like uh, it's like right. Wasn't it right when Empire at War dropped? We found out about Legacies almost like. It's almost yeah, like, like they the didn't, day. <laughs> yeah, right, I think it was the day. So it took a little bit of the steam out of that. But ever since then, I wasn't super excited for Legacies. But man, I am now. When Rivals finally started coming out, which is pretty, yeah, pretty pumped. I think there's a lot of really, really cool characters that are going to be released. Like Empire at War had like two characters that right. I care about. Three characters, maybe. Like Mace, Ahsoka and Cad Bane or something like that. But right. Legacies has a ton of cool characters with Yoda, Boba Fett, another Luke, another Han. We've got we've got a lot of cool stuff coming. Yeah. Our way. So it's the 11th we'll talk about plans for that, but really what are the the buying and selling? We're thinking about buying and selling and collecting like what are those cards that are going to be super hot and that when you open those packs up on the 11th, these are the ones you want to have. Jay and I are going to share our picks for which ones those are. 
Uh, and we've got some great questions and hopefully answers since Jay's here. Thankfully, I was a little worried I was going to have to answer them myself, but now I know you'll get the right answer. So we'll go through that. Also, Jay, listen, I know that everyone on the internet, you're the big YouTube guy and Chris does his Friday night dice and he's on all the time eating cheese, whatever he's doing now on a stream. <laughs> but, but I thought, you know, we got to go back to the old days. If this was 1925 and people got, let's say, I don't know, for example, I don't know if you can hear this box. You hear this? That. Oh, I hear it. Yeah. That's, that is called a Dyson card game. Rivals draft set is what it says. We're going to do nice. an, an audio unboxing. So you can, uh. Yeah. So if we want to uh, uh, really eliminate all of our listeners, do an audio unboxing so they can't see anything. <laughs> but uh, I have waited. <laughs> I've waited way too long to open this box. I also paid way too much for this box but i have in my hand one box of rivals i cannot nice. wait to open it now you said you did get that as a little christmas gift from from chris no 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 i got well you did I, what do you mean I, no you exactly did that no no no. me uh one of our very very special uh supporters of uh, the old blanks oh. sent two to us oh. one for me and one for Chris. Oh, 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 I see how this goes. Nice. And that's nice. my dad actually bought me a Rivals pack for Christmas, so I have two. Oh, that's really nice. That's actually now you've tripled your collection with these yes. two, those two boxes. <laughs> that's awesome that the two of you got Rivals from, from one of your listeners. That's really special. Yeah, it was awesome. Very cool. Well, that's I'm not jealous at all. That's fine. I had to sell my left <laughs> kidney and Emily's kidney too. It's my wife, but it's all right. She has another one, I think. Well, I'm glad for you. And did you open both of them? We have. Of course you did. Are they in sleeves? If, well, no. Well, because you, you take them in and out of sleeves when you draft because you got to make your deck and then you got to sleeve yeah. the deck. So, Well, no, you don't. Like, if you have the same sleeves, like you, you yeah, know, bring yeah. your sleeves with you. I, well, you might change the cards or the characters. Yeah, but they're yours. The, the, the rivals is going to be yours, right? Oh, I don't. I don't use all the same sleeves for all my decks. Oh, okay. I have like artwork sleeves with Han oh. and Vader. And- okay, all right. Well, either way, I'm glad that you have them, and uh, so we'll open. Then it's going to be boring. Then I won't open it. Jay doesn't need it. He's no, got, no, no, no. He's got you can open seven. it. All right, I'll open my little my cards. Um, listen, while you were on vacation, Jay, and doing whatever you're doing down in uh, South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty upset about this, actually. What's that? About me making tokens? You were supposed to do a show with me and Chris. Yeah. And get the get the little thingies and teach us how to make some shrinky tokens. Dinks? Yes. Some shrinky dinks. Listen to me. While, you, while you're mocking me, my friend Alan Preston, who is one of our fans on the Twitter, by the way, it's Twitter, it's discard T-O re-rolls, how you do that. Alan Preston, he's getting around. He's actually the one that sent us the Rivals <laughs> packs. He did? Yeah. What? Well, very good, listen. Good, very nice supporter. He's a super good supporter. I gave him the gift. I See, I gave him a gift, and he gave you a gift. And that's how it all works. We share in that, this community. Yep. I gave him the gift of not being afraid to make tokens. And so he made <laughs> a whole bunch of tokens and cards and did a nice job. And I made my little tokens. I can't show you. You can't see them. But uh, maybe I'll send you a couple. I made the little uh, resource tokens. I think they came out really nice. That was awesome. So a quick funny story. My wife came home and I'm, I did like, I don't know, I wasted like 10 sheets to get these things right. And it says they're not toxic, but you can smell it. Like there's no doubt you're making shrinky dinks inside your house. That or like crack. I'm not sure. So she, she walked in the house. It smelled honestly like a, just a chemical farm. It was <laughs> awful. So she made me air out the whole house and. I don't recommend you making them back to back as much as I did. Maybe do that outside or something. But I thought it was fun. It came out nice. And uh, you can head over to uh, to the Twitter, and we have links to the template that I used. And I think I think I've got the token template down. I tried to make uh, a couple other cool things, like a my home version of the spot glass card that did not work out good. It doesn't look. Good. <laughs> I'll stick to making the alt art cards uh, 
the way that we've done them before. But anyway, uh, I also want to say thank you uh, to our patrons. That this is the way that this show happens, and uh, and also thank you to people who send Jay and Chris cards so they can play in tournaments too. So thank you, Alan, for that. <laughs> but um, all the way at the top, we have a Lando's high roller. That's Anthony. Anthony, I can't thank you enough for your support. We have James and Uriah and Andrew, Mike, Hunter, Lester, David, Joseph, Jason, and Chris. And one of these people I found out is actually in Rochester. And I'm an idiot for not even realizing Really? That. Yeah. So, I mean, how bad am I? Guy supports the show. I don't even like talk to him about being in Rochester and playing. So I got to do some <laughs> live plays um, with him uh, here. So it's awesome. And thank you, everybody, for supporting the show. Again, head to the website. It's uh, discardedreal.com. And you can subscribe and all the things that you like to do. Now, Jay. A lot of stuff has happened. One of the things you just told me before we went on is that all the legacy cards are finally in Tabletop Simulator. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. I'm, right? ready, I'm ready to start doing that now that I'm back. And it's got to draft. I've seen you, and I'm not jealous at all that you've had all these drafts with all of your other friends. And uh, <laughs> But it seems to have been going really well, and uh, you like doing draft on Tabletop. Oh, yeah. We've had an absolute blast. And then the guy that made... I can't remember what his name is. Well, one, Ice Cobra. Huge shout out to Ice Huge. Cobra for doing the TTS mo- uh, mod, the Destiny mod for all the cards and getting legacies up just in time for New Year and all that kind of stuff. So huge shout out to him. And then I don't know who did the draft little program, but it works like a charm. Yeah, let me bring that up here uh, as we're talking. So you send me that link. Why don't we go ahead and p- I'll paste that in uh, in Twitter as well. So you... The link that you sent me, where the heck did it go? It's over here. Some place. There it is. So it's it's called, well, it doesn't really say a whole lot. Let me see. It, says, it doesn't say a whole lot. But it doesn't need to. It's from <laughs> DutchResearch.nl. I have no idea who to give credit to. How did you even get this link? Uh, it was sent to me by D House. Well, D House. How about that? So it says, the website's <laughs> DutchResearch.nl. It's SWDestiny.DutchResearch.nl. Anyway, on the page, it just says generator. You type in the amount of Awakenings Booster, Spirit of Rebellion, and Empire at War. Um, and then basically you hit generate, right? And then packaging method, you can choose either sealed or draft. So explain this to me just a little bit, Jay, so people who may not have done this before. What, so how, how would I actually use this? So if you want to play with six people, you just leave the 12, 12, 12. Because everyone's going to open three packs, draft all your cards from the first three packs. Then you open another three packs, and then you draft from those. So you're going to need six packs per person. Okay. Got it. And you don't have to use all three sets. You could do just one set if you wanted to. It's just a little funner if you do all three. Okay. Uh, then you generate it. Don't look at the cards that uh, end up being picked. So just, uh, yeah, you can just shrink the window or whatever. So I did. So right now it's 12 to 12. I'm going to hit generate and boom. So, so I, this, there they are. This, yep. This would be for a six person draft. You It gives you the URL for the randomly generated packs if you wanted to send it out. It's. I don't use it. I just go ahead and export the packs to Tabletop Simulator and have it ready for everyone. Now, what's this here? Packaging method. Yeah, so draft. So you can do draft or sealed. Sealed is when you get, uh, I think it's eight packs. You get eight packs and you build a deck just with those okay. eight packs. You don't do any kind of drafting. Gotcha. Okay. So that's how that works. And then the draft would be uh, all in one thing. So... I see how that works. Okay. So that's just, there's my booster. So if I did sealed, I would say, and it's eight, you said? Yep. Okay. So I did eight of just awakenings and then there's my packs. So it's eight packs and just comes to you all at once. That's cool. Yep. So you said then you, oh, I had Vader in there. Did you see that? I did. Boom. Good old Vader. And rocket launcher. Yes. Okay. That's fear to rebellion. Yeah. Well, then how'd that happen? Oh, I don't you know think what? you click generate. Yeah, you see? So it's really easy to use. <laughs> There's like two buttons on it and I already screwed it up. But then you take, you export it to TTS and you bring it in and look at this. I've got TTS open and there it is. There they are. There it is. So it generates this. And so you, you, it's, it's, this is where I get a little bit confused, Jay. So one person would host this. Is that how that works? Yeah. The way I, I like to do it is I just get it set up for everyone, and then all you have to do is invite people and then draft. Okay. Gotcha. Instead of trying to do it as a as a group. 
Okay. So then I draft the cards and then do you each go your separate ways? Like, what do you do? Like, how, uh, how you, do you draft then... the cards, you go ahead and build the decks in the same lobby. Yeah. That's how I did it anyway. Go ahead and build your decks and then you do pairings. You can either search a randomizer to randomly, do, randomly do pairings or uh, choose who you want to go up against and then it will be the winner against the winner and the losers against the losers and okay. then go from there. Okay, got it. Awesome. And so you, you've you have you gone through an entire draft online? Like, did you guys all play? It was you, Mike, Chris, and uh, D-House, right? So we did that one. We haven't finished that one, but then I did another one with just a bunch of uh, fans or people that listen and watch uh, okay. that are in our Discord. Yeah. And I just posted in there. I said, looking for five more people to do a draft. And we did it that way. And we finished that one. That one is done. Okay, how about, about how long does that take to do? Uh, It took like, what, 30 minutes a game. So like two hours, I yeah. would say, Not with too six bad. people. If you do just six or if you do just three rounds. Awesome. All right. And so you did. And then over the break, you said you did one with how many people live? Uh, Six. Did you play that all the way through too? We did. About how long does that take too? That took like two and a half hours. See, that's to me, that's the right amount. We talked about a little bit. So like this, I double like paid twice for this set. This is my audio unboxing here. I paid <laughs> double what I should pay for this. I think it's what, 15 bucks is their actual price when yep, it's available. $15. So, I mean, I, I totally get stores keeping them right now and getting players to, you know, use the store copy. I think that's awesome. But I think get, buying this and then getting a few packs and then as soon as you play it a couple of times, like you already get your money back off of it. Oh yeah, definitely. No doubt. And there's all right, so I'm opening this thing up, but I can't wait anymore. Turn it, Jay. Let's do it. Really, let's see what I got in here. This is gonna happen. I not only should I mean you know what's in it. I, I think I do. I, I look at spoilers and previews every night, all night. So yeah, I think I have a <laughs> relatively good idea. Well, look at this. What's the little blue dot mean on the package? The blue dot. Yeah, there's a blue dot on top of Anna. Oh, I don't know. It's some FFG stuff comes with dots on them for some reason. You hear that? That is just, listen, this is the Something sound. Something in production. This is audio gold, this is what they call this. The listenership, oh, yeah. they're just subscribing oh. by the truckload. Uh, what's your favorite card in this thing and why? Um, I don't know. Ketsu's pretty cool. Let's see here. We open it up. Yeah, why do you like her? Just because of the card itself or what? Here we go. She's got she's got good damage sides. She's got cool ability. Nine health kind of sucks though. Hear that? Yep. Collectors everywhere are going. Don't do that. There don't go. don't bridge them. <laughs> I'll bridge them up. Let's see. Anakin. We got Lobot. Lobot looks pretty cool, but people don't really like him. Well, he's just not exciting to play. Look at this. It's like playing Akbar or Mon Mothma. Right. Yeah, exactly. Katsu, Jawa Scavenger. Here we go. Here's a card. I'm going to read you a card that I think Let's see it. out of all of these is the card of cards. All right. And uh, I was watching um, Rebel Gray, and he agrees with me. So Is it hidden motive? Don't even listen. Let me read it first. Choose. All it's right. an event. It's blue. It's zero cost. Choose a, <laughs> choose a symbol, then re-roll an opponent's die. If that die just rolled the chosen symbol... You remove it. And the quote Very is, nice. to defeat your enemy, you must know your enemy. Maul. Before he was Maul. chopped in half. Hidden motive. What do you think about no, this No, this was after he was chopped in half. It was after? Pretty sure this is uh, during Rebels. He looks... So the art here is unique. He looks a little skinny. Yeah. Yeah. He, an old. Yeah. It was. Is, is that what happened to him? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, you get old after a while. Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know the lore <laughs> here. I, you know what? You're just Have as you bad. Have you not watched Rebels? You're just as bad as Jedi Geek Girl. By the way, plugged to her <laughs> show. I happened to be on it a couple weeks ago. She ripped on me for not liking uh, whatever it's called. Rebels, yeah. You haven't watched it? Come That's, on, man. It's tough. Don't be a Chris. Don't be a Chris. It's tough to get. You know what I watched with my daughter? She's two and a half. Uh, we watched the The Forces of Destiny. Nice. She oh, loved yeah. it. She loved. To me, that was good. I, I could get into that because it was about the right amount, like two and a half minutes. I you, could deal with it. You can get into that. 
but you can't get in the rebels. I don't want to watch Darth me? Maul in a retirement home. Like to me, that's not a real. You know, <laughs> this looks like he's just got out of a sta- like a sauna. Like he's over at like a community center. He's like, hey, I should tell you the days when I got chopped in half, everybody. You know, with the towel that you don't need to see. <laughs> oh, what do you think about goodness. this? Ca- tell me about this card. Is this a good card or is it just me? No, it's a very good card. I I really really like that card. I think, um, I think it's better than doubt. Really to be honest with you. Yeah, I think so too. Because you're because you don't get you don't get uh slammed by it. Yeah, if you if you're super unlucky and your opponent rerolls into the same symbol, then you don't get totally just blown away by it. Yeah, there's some good stuff in here though. I like it. I like the art. I like the idea. I think I definitely yeah, I think it's better than doubt. And doubt is playable and competitive. So I think that is definitely playable and competitive. One of the things people have been talking about, Jay, is um and it happens a little bit more in legacies. Like uh someone was comparing it to uh um the I don't and you I, you've never really been a magic player, right? You said just a little bit in high school? Yeah, no, not even like <laughs> Yeah, so I played I played a ton of magic and back so there were beta cards, like alpha and betas, like when it first came out. And they're saying like the first year of Destiny was like the alpha and beta cycle for a magic, and that like all bets were off. They didn't know what kind of game they even had. And then when I got in was in um the the third edition and fourth edition of Magic, where they like all the power levels came back to like reality and the game actually became balanced. And I feel yeah. like that's starting to happen. Like, here's an example. Here's a, here's a weapon. This one is crafted lightsaber. So it's cost is two. Um, play only on an exhausted character. Uh, it's got two melee, two melee for one, um, three modified melee, one resource, one resource. What do you think about that weapon? I really like the direction of that weapon. Um, if they keep making things like this, then it slows the game down. Right, because you're you you might have that weapon now, but you don't get to roll it out this turn. So, anything that slows the game down, I am all for. So, if they keep making cards with this style of design, I'll be very happy. And it seems like I mean, there's not. I'm looking here through the other weapons here. Is there any redeploy or anything like that in here? Yeah, there's one. Yeah, so here's vibro. Vibro sword. sword. Vibro sword. It's three cost. It's neutral. Uh, redeploy after its character is defeated. Move this card. One melee. Three melee for one. Uh, two modified melee. One uh, discard. And I'm sorry. One is it? Yeah, discard and then one uh, resource for three. Yep. What do, you, what do you think about that? Um. In competitive, it's not nearly as good, but in draft, it's amazing. Right, and uh, I the when you and Chris were talking recently about draft, the idea of first of all, there's two battlefields here and two, and I, I laugh so hard when Chris says like if you draft a battlefield, it's like drafting a kicker, and I'd say that would be for plots and all that stuff. Like why, when you're drafting, you're looking for dice, right? As many dice as oh, you can yeah. get, dice and weapons. Yep, one hundred percent. So yeah. This is uh, and characters and probably characters. characters. Characters are top priority. But how do you? Because you don't want to be stuck with Anakin, Ketsu, Jawa. Right. How, like, so are you just grabbing any character you can? Like, what do you? Uh... More times than not, I will take a unless like I played a draft on uh, it's on the YouTube channel, and in my first. I think it was my first PAX. I had seventh sister. Right. And she's just not fe- efficient in draft because you don't get her ability. Yep. So she's an 11 cost that has uh, really bad die sides for what she is. And I passed her up. So you don't always take characters. Right. But if you can get a low cost character, then it's totally 100% worth it. Got it. And I think it's, it's more you play, the more you can have experience. But yeah, you're trying to, you're just trying to know that math um, and figure it all out, which is interesting. What about prize? But like, so at the end of it, did you, how did you play for, did like keep what you draft? Is that where you guys were? No, we did the uh, snake draft oh, where God. you draft whatever cards you want. So what was the top card? Uh, I actually in the draft on Saturday. Yeah, I came in first. I went three and zero. What'd you get? And of course, you you picked on your poor dad. (laughs) Who's your dad and your brother? 
<laughs> Dude, what did you get? I'm sorry, I cut you. And off. then it was cool because we, I met, I met um, several huge like a family that watches Double Blanks. What? Um, Are like they in four, therapy? They have like four children. They're in deep and, therapy now, <laughs> and they all all watch Double Blanks. Wow! And he didn't. He couldn't get a draft set. The dad couldn't. Oh, man. So I told him to come to the draft on Saturday, and he used my other one. Oh, so that's it was cool. really cool. So yeah. he got to use my second draft set, and he got to play with us. So that was fun. Yeah, I think so. Huge. Yeah, it was awesome, and I think I took like a Soka or something. Was the card that I took first? Yeah, because I had everything else. All the legendaries we pulled were. Grand Inquisitor, Thrawn, Grand Inquisitor's lightsaber, Ahsoka, Mace, and Chopper. Yeah. So it was a really <laughs> trash de- yeah. uh, box. That's like one good. of the worst boxes ever. Not good. Uh, so what, uh, what do you have on tap for uh, next Friday? So if you are in the UK and you're listening, we have a lot of listeners from there. I want to say thank you, by the way. Um, you've been enjoying this for a while. So us in America who have been so used to getting everything first actually had to take a step back and relax and chill and pay $30 for their box here that we just opened. Uh, but <laughs> uh, we're finally going to be able to get caught up and get our legacies next week. Jay, yeah, what are you how doing? did that even happen? Like, how did Europe get their legacies so early? I bet you, so here's what I think, this is just a total guess, is that that's where the boat came from anyway, so maybe, maybe, just maybe they're trying to flip the script a little bit, they're trying to build um, build a player base out there and said, yeah, you know what, we can get it there first, let's get it there first. So there. Do they ship the boat from there, or does it come from China? But it passes Europe, doesn't it? It it's might the pass way. Europe. Yeah, so but... they're like, just drop it off. Give them some love. <laughs> Give them some love. I don't know. That's why they. That's why they had to delay legacies. It was supposed to come out. I don't in two days. Yeah, that was going to come out a week late because they decided they were going to dock in Europe, drop off legacies. Maybe they're mad at some of the content creators who give them a hard time. I not being one of them. I'm going to tell them. I think they're doing a great job. Everybody <laughs> at Fantasy Flight, thank you for all that you've done. And you know what? When they come to me, they come to me. I'll be very excited. However, if we they're not know here, I'm the FFG sympathizer here. That's right. If they don't come by next Friday, I'll be very angry. So, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but beyond that, is there anything you're planning to do for um, for a release day, or what, what's your? As of right now, we have no plans. Yeah. Also, there's a regional like four hours from me on Saturday, Uh-oh. and I don't know if I'm going to get to go. Which sat next Saturday or this Saturday? Uh, six days from now, or yeah. it's on the ninth, I think. Okay, so seven. No, it's it's on the sixth. Six. So, That's like this weekend. Yeah, four days from now. Wait a minute, aren't the Falcons in the playoffs too? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh yeah, they're in the playoffs. So what are you gonna do? We cru- we crushed and because we were playing Carolina, and my yeah. parents live in South Carolina. Yeah. For those of you just so, joining us, this is Falcons Talk with Chip and Jay. <laughs> uh, what? What? Um, so you're gonna have a choice to make. I think they actually play on Saturday too. Uh, well, I have to work currently. Oh. That's why I'm saying I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go or not. So you're gonna miss the playoffs and you're gonna miss the regional. No, um, some something's gonna happen. Something's got to give there. I think it's work, my <laughs> friend. I think it is your your paying job is to go. But uh, let me see when they play. What would you play? They do play on Saturday. I told you. I'm not making this stuff up. You know, it's not just a pretty face. Listen, you got choices to make. These are hard choices. Oh, f- snap. Yeah. This ain't good. I, I think, wait oh, a minute. Well, it's, at, it's at 8.15. It's at 8.15 that night. I'm guessing your boss doesn't listen. That's, I mean, maybe maybe he or she's a huge Destiny fan, but they're not <laughs> listening to not. this trash. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I am excited because we can now talk to you again about decks. And when you're building decks, Jay, I know that you're working on building a nice little collection of cards. Um, and one of the things I thought about was if you want to be a competitive player, if you really, you know, the idea of being truly competitive and making sure that you have an equal footing when you play some of these players that, that just live, breathe, and eat destiny, you got to have the cards. So, we're taking a look at using some great resources that are out there and big shout out to, um, first of all, Star Wars Destiny Database is just amazing that you can get all these cards and, and you talk about net decking and I know people 
rip on it, but hey, it's really great for new players to be able to at least get an idea for what those new decks look or what those uh, competitive decks look like. So we pulled some of those down and I took a look at some values. Now, I buy a lot of cards, Jay, and I think everybody knows it at this point. I did a lot of work on the Electronic Bay, also called eBay. Um, <laughs> so I took what I knew from eBay and and searched all these cards. There's a great resource over at Chance Cube, which they have uh, the values and they, they, they aggregate them from a whole bunch of different... Um, online resellers, which is awesome. So we took, I have two done and I wanted to share these with you, Jay, and see maybe when you're thinking about playing competitively in a regional, what do you think about value for this? So let's look at five die villain. What do you, first of all, what do you think about that deck? Do you think it's, is it still in tier one at this point? It's extremely good and it's the best bank for your buck. So here's the total total. And this is with, uh, a couple cards that maybe could go either way, Jay. If you look at this, can you see it on my screen now, Jay? Oh, I, I'm looking. Okay, so um, this this is a pretty uh, relatively straightforward build of this. So this was from I want to make sure I give credit. It's Fez da Brut. Fez da Brut. Maybe he's Italian. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you go through the list, the total amount to build the whole deck, and there's no sideboard in Destiny, which I think is I wish that they did have that. 141 bucks. So the nice. cost, so the cost is in this night sniper. So right now, if you wanted to buy, and I remember Jay when that first came out, you're like, dude, that's the card you got to get. And I picked them up for 19 a piece. It's right now, if you want to buy it, it's 38 bucks a card. So those two of those, Holy crap. yep, it's. I mean, and that is, oh I'm telling God. you, that's low. It's 76 bucks for two of those cards. And then the other one yeah. that held its value is Holdout Blaster. Those are the two most expensive cards in this deck. It's 11 bucks a piece. And surprisingly, Jay, here's the craziest thing I've learned. Surprisingly, the card that's third is Force Illusion. It's six bucks a card. If you can find it. If you can find it. You can't even find it. All the crap. Six Force bucks a card. Illusion. So you got three cards. Night Sniper, Holdout Blaster, Force. Here, I'll make it a little bigger for you. There you go. Got it there. So Night night Sniper. Cool stuff. Ink. You're taking a look? You All right, go on. Tell me what it is. What card are you looking up? Four Solution. Go ahead, look $6. Up. That is insane. Tell me what it is of cool stuff right now. Here goes Jay. This is, uh, if you're just joining us, it's Chip and Jay. Search the internet for card prices. It's a great show. Oh, my goodness. It's $6. Dude, listen. Like I said. How the crap. Look up caution. Can you even get caution from there? It, well, Force Illusion is sold out at six dollars. Okay, tell me how much caution is. Caution is four dollars, and it's sold out. Boom. So here's what I'm telling you, folks. Let me just. I have like thousands of these. Let me just sell these all for. I'm telling you, this is four and six dollars. This is this is the <laughs> reality session. Is what this is. These are the cards oh that are going goodness. for the money. Those those cards are huge right now. I couldn't believe it. So that is insane. The the characters are cheap. You got Night Sister, which is a buck. Uh, Balatik's going for a buck, and uh, Sienna Ray is a buck fifty. That's a great value. So so for all your your die for your characters, six bucks. You've got an F <laughs> eleven is a buck. DH seventeen is four dollars. Go down the list. The Relby, which I think is a great weapon, it's two bucks a piece. Yep. So go down the list, and there it is. Flank is a buck, which is kind of crazy too. So 141 bucks. What do you think about that in terms of value? Would you could you replace that night sniper and not be at a disadvantage? Do you think, or what do you? Think? Oh yeah, I I dropped both night snipers, and, and you now in? you're at what uh 130 something, or I mean 30 something bucks. Yeah, so what it's seven seven years bucks less. So here, I'll do it right now for you. So if we drop these out, let's do zero. 65 bucks. Yeah, so there you go. You have a tier one deck for $65. And what would you put in this place? You can put anything. Any good well, card yes. can go in there. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So you have you have um, the Relby. I don't put Relbys in mine. So okay. add in a second Relby, maybe. Okay, that's two bucks. Might as well. Do you have Vibrax in here? I don't have Vibrax in there. All right, go. Don't just change the two X eights to two Vibro axes. Okay, just do that, and then you're done. And then you're done. And a Vibro axe right now. I'm gonna guess here. I'll tell you what that goes for. Vibro axe is not thirty eight dollars. It is right now. Not there. 
Vibro Axe. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Star Wars. Sometimes you have to type in Star Wars Destiny. Did I spell Vibro Axe wrong? It's like the 1DB46000. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's the Vibro Dash <laughs> Axe B, yeah, BD Cutter. 320 to 449 for two. There you go. With see, So here's a tip for you. If you buy these cards, I, I've bought... I, I can't even tell you how many on eBay. Uh, you should never pay for shipping. You should never have to pay for shipping. Four forty nine free shipping, great deal. So it's two something a card. And there yep. you go. So that now you're talking I about. I would say maybe riot batons or something, but it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Riot batons, riot batons are yeah. expensive. Oh yeah, they are. I'll tell you what. They, I'm going to say tw- um, right now. I think they're going for nineteen. Let me see. Riot baton. Uh, twenty five for two, but that's an auction. Oh wow! But that, but, oh, okay. but that's not yeah. So buy it now is twenty five bucks. So they usually fifteen dollars right there, with, plus three dollars shipping. Yeah. So it's usually right now under twenty. You can get them for about eighteen. But yeah, good card. So there you go. All right. So it's there. You're saying that's still way cheaper than thirty eight dollars. Yep. Yeah. So thumbs up for this deck. You think modification? You're under a hundred. You think it's competitive? Oh, yeah, definitely. 100%. So here's the one everybody's talking about. And I I hope this is the last time we talk about this deck for a while. It's R2P2, right? Did you see <laughs> Did you see what the cost was? Did I show it to you yet? No, but okay. I know it's expensive. Yeah, this is yeah. not a cheap deck. This is not. Are you ready? It's got a freaking Ancients. That's $100. Can you see it? Holy smokes. 30250. So if we were to price this out. Now this again, this is Edwin um Edwin Chen's build. Um and this was uh just searched the other night. So your characters again, it's got Poe and Ray, and those are from that um the two player starter. Or not that it's yep. it two player it's not starter, two player set, it's just called. Um seven fifty for Poe, which I was surprised <clears throat> how much that was. Two fifty for Ray, you're talking twenty bucks just in your characters. The to buy the box is what twenty five. Yeah, something like that. Here's the craziest thing. The craziest thing about this deck isn't the fact that ancient lightsaber is fifty bucks. Look at the last card. Oh my god! There's no <laughs> way. Go search it right now. Sound well, the alarm. Uh, well, Sound the alarm to... is ten dollars a card. Hold on. So Go you have to it. add in the factor that if you just buy the two player set. Yes. Then you get a sound the alarm. So buy two two player sets. Yep. And you get two Ray, two Poe, two sound the alarm, two Ray's lightsabers, yep. two Poe's blasters, two medical droids, yep. two honor guard. That's it. And it would, is guard. it is it cheaper? Is it che- it doesn't come a guard? Is it cheaper to buy the two player set? Definitely. Will that make it cheaper than buying singles? I think so. Yep. I think so because it's what you're talking 20, 30, 40. It's pretty close. Plus you get all the other cards. So it's, you know, I mean, you get all the, you get the, all the villain stuff. It's definitely worth it. No doubt about it. So if you're thinking about doing, if you're, if you play destiny, if you're listening to this, you probably already have them. So, but you definitely need to get that. And I keep hearing people that talk about how they get it for on clearance at target. If I, if I saw them right (laughs) now, I'd buy every single one of them. No doubt about it. I mean, (laughs) It's sound the alarm was going for ten dollars, and people were buying them at ten dollars a card. That's insane. That is not. I, don't even, I, I hardly play that. I've played it once, and it was against you. Yes, yeah, we all learned about that big time. <laughs> but there it is, three hundred two. Ancient lightsabers are you just can't touch them. Are they that good of a card, Jay? Fifty bucks worth a card. They're super good. Yeah. What? So what is it about that card that just makes it the the most expensive card in Destiny? You get to pay two for a weapon that has a plus three on it. That immediately makes it worth it. And then when after you use it, you can heal for two. So it's like it's just super good. Right. Right. And then you so you heal, shuffle it up, and then you're using that what with uh lightsaber pole? Yeah. I and then like it's always coming back. Hitting hitting for a plus three on round one is just so Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. So that is a $50 value. Um, and you know what? I, I've got so many, so many Empire War cards. I just went too crazy with it. But boxes are starting to get super cheap right now. 
You know, you can get a box. Somebody just said Barnes and Noble had packs for a buck or something like that. And That's I've seen awesome. boxes for like 50 bucks. It's worth it. It is so worth it. If you pull one of those, man. And look at this one. Shoto, I have so many Shoto's lightsabers. Those are 750 right now. <laughs> Handcrafted <laughs> light bow. Qui-Gon and all yep. them. Handcrafted light bow. $23 right now. Yep. 23 bucks. That card. How much are four speeds? Uh, four speeds are 45 Holy smokes. Yep. That is an expensive deck to play. To, I mean, after seeing this, I don't know what would make it more expensive. If the characters were legendary, you know, because how much more yeah. can you get? Like, to me, that's about as expensive a deck as you can have. All right. For $50, you can get one ancient lightsaber. Yep. Or you can get on Cool Stuff Inc. and get a whole board game. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> Which one am I going to do? Uh, let me get scythe real quick. <laughs> right. I know. It's so tough. It's tough. So uh, I posted a, a screenshot of, not of this one, but I posted it of um, the Five Die Villain. Feedback, people were just sharing left and right, which was awesome. The feedback was, it's nothing if you've played Pokemon before. So I guess Pokemon yeah. decks are pretty expensive. I have no or magic, idea. magic, I'm sure. Definitely the new, some of the magic decks for sure. And I was trying to think, uh, actually it was Alan I was talking with and remembering back in, I think it was 1996. This is like, we're talking before the Pro Tour happened in magic. <laughs> hey, you were not even born. Am I right about that? I, I was born. You weren't that old. Let me tell you, you were doing poo-poo. I wasn't very old. Poo-poo in your diapers. Uh, and I was out there with our team playing team events of Magic the Gathering in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, and I'm just trying to think of that. I'm going to try and get that built. Uh, my good friend still has his one together. So we're going to try and price that out, what that would cost. But it was <laughs> sick. It was sick. But anyway, so uh, what deck, Jay, give me two more decks you think I want to get the price prices of. We'll do it for, for next time. What are the... Should we do Qui-Gon? So, game? do we want to do a Legacies deck? Yeah, let's try a Legacies deck. What, what be, what's the meta? What's a gauntlet deck, do you think, so far right now in Legacies? So, a uh, Yoda, Qui-Gon, or a Yoda... Let's see. Any Yoda deck. Okay. <laughs> where you have two Yodas. Okay. So, so there's like Yoda, Ahsoka, Yoda, Qui-Gon, Yoda, Mill decks. There's Yoda... Hondo, Yoda, all kinds of nonsense. Okay, so, so we'll do one of those. So pick, yeah, pick any Yoda deck, and then let's see what other Obi Wan Maz. Maybe that's a fun one. Maz. All right, we'll put those together, and we'll see. So I want to have. I mean, my goal would be to put the gauntlet together in terms of a an average cost that a player should expect to pay. And then you and I break it down just to see whether there's a value and if we can make it a little bit cheaper. How would you tweak um, R2P2? Could you? Can you even tweak this? Uh, I don't think four speed goes in that deck. So that drops $45 one right, right there. All right. So if we pull this out. Let's do that. <clears throat> so now you're looking at 257 Jeez, still expensive. Still expensive. Um. Medical droids come out, but they're not even expensive. So, right. I mean, do you think um, take the sound of the alarms out? You don't need that crap. Yeah, that's crazy. For ten dollars, two thirty seven, and then add in something other than that. And then if you had it, so let's say you're a new player. If you had to choose between handcrafted light bow and force or uh, ancient lightsaber. Ooh, that's a tough one. Which one's, Handcra which one's more Handcrafted valuable? Light Bow is so freaking clutch in that deck. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. all of the shield decks, it, it basically counters R2P2s and Qui-Gon's in itself. So I think Handcrafted's definitely need to be in there. So if could you put a Mashaki training in there? Mikashi training? That too, or Mashaki, either one. Both of those cards. That's my you new can try. Card. Yeah, Mikashi training's fine. Just trying to think of what, what an option would be for Ancient Lightsaber. Oh, instead of Ancient yeah, Lightsaber? Yeah. Regular Lightsaber, Luke's yeah. Lightsaber, something like that. Yeah, okay. But if you were putting it together and you really wanted to, to be competitive, you're saying you pretty much got to have them. I would have two handcrafted and two ancients for sure. Yep. So there you go. No doubt. So trim it down a little bit. You're still looking at about a little bit more than 200 bucks to play that deck. Yeah. Yep. My worry is just how long. 
So the way that the cycle works, Jay, is it um, the what's the main format? Not not legacies, not standard. Standard. So in standard, how long do we have left with ancient lightsaber? Uh, a whole year, year from yeah. now. So see, you still got it, and that card's gonna have value for a while. Oh yeah, I don't think it's gonna definitely. Be so that might be, you know, that's a that's if if you see Empire War packs. I'm telling you, it's still worth it to get it. It's worth it to get to get that card. It's going to be around for a while. It's worth a shot, I think. But I'm a gambling guy too. It's worth it. So there and then you go. when they if they do anything like magic, where yeah. you can they reprint cards and yeah. like magic still uses cards from a long time ago in right. standard and stuff. So yep, yep, they still do. I mean, that's what I'm trying to figure out. <clears throat> you know what format. What format do I settle down in? I feel like, yeah, I feel like that the crazy all bets are off, play everything format. It just they they don't monitor it as well. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and so I need all the help I can get. That's my only that's my only issue. And then you get all that garbage that people have, you know, that's worked its way out in the sets. But uh, mm-hmm. so there you go. That's the cost of being competitive, Jay. So maybe you do need to work so you can get some more of them ancients. Yeah, yeah, for Saturday. sure. Saturday. One of the questions uh, that we have had asked, and I could not find an answer, Jay, which is if this is coming out in limited release, first of all, what does that even mean? And second of all, when when will this be um, legal to play? So if I have a tournament, mine is coming up in March, I think. Um, it, It'll definitely be legal by then. But when, so have you heard anything about um, you know, when it's going to be not limited release, like the official release to me that's i don't understand that i've not heard uh anything it's okay. like a pre-release is what january 11th will be okay. they'll probably do a pre-release party and you get promos and all that kind of nonsense yeah here's um the, here's the problem it's the second of january and it's happening in nine days yep and, and we I, haven't seen or heard yeah. anything so that's a little is this part for that's, the course well, yeah that's ffg 100 percent it's a, I mean, I'm last minute. I'm Mr. Last Minute. That's like way last oh, minute I'm for me. Definitely last minute. But this is like really last minute for a company. I love them though. Yeah. I still love them. I love them. I'm going to buy it. But they make the best games in the industry. No so. doubt. No doubt about it. Fallout included. <laughs> I'm going to have that next week. But all right. And now they're under Asthma Day. So it's like. Yeah. Just, they have just, everything. Just, the, just you know what? The production value is off the charts. It really is. I love all their games. So, Oh, yeah. I'm an apologist. Yeah. They did the newest Catan, the Game of Thrones Catan. Oh, they, dude, that game is sweet. It's pretty cool. I played it for the first time this weekend. Yeah. Was it, Well, the components look good. The components are fantastic. <laughs> and how was the game? <clears throat> the... Uh, the the way they did the rule book is awful. So like, oh, see, but FFG when they do board games, they do uh, a rule book and then they do the rules reference. So whenever you go to learn all the new rules, just go through the rules reference and learn right. from there because it's it tells you everything you need to know. Do you think? Uh, did your fiance play that game? She did not. Does she like uh, Game of Thrones? She doesn't. Well, she she's a. Uh, she she'll watch it with me, yeah. but she doesn't watch it by herself. She does like Catan though. Okay, I see. I'm trying to find. I gotta get. I gotta get my wife into the gaming, and she, you know, she she definitely lets me play Destiny. And she appreciates the podcast and like my. I mean, absolute addiction with this game, and she'll play like you know Friedman Freeze games. Oh yeah. Okay, I don't know how deep you go. Does she this, like Five Hundred Four? No, she does not like Five. She likes Fear. <laughs> fear. Yeah. It's a great game. Great card game. Maybe we should do a yeah. board game podcast because I got plenty of those too. We can talk all about I have, it. I have more of that than I do Star Wars See? Destiny. There it is. You're here now. <laughs> and it sounds like it sounds like one of the things you're going to have soon is, please tell me, tr- you said Transformers before we started. I'm not playing that crap. Well, tell me what, what all right, I, I, I didn't want to read anything, but tell me about Transformers. What happened? I, I haven't read it either. I just saw... Sugi from the Knights oh, no. of Ren. We're friends on Facebook. He shared a post that Wizards of the Coast has announced a Transformers collectible card game. Oh boy! I thought, well, that's interesting. They steal Lucas Litzinger from FFG, and now they're coming out with a Transformers card game, huh? 
sounds very uh uh suspicious it does it does it say who the uh lead designer is on this it doesn't say anything about dice, but if that comes up, man, oh man. it said, wait a minute, it's- <laughs> hold on a minute. It says here, so this is from uh, rollingstone.com. All right. Okay. So uh, Wizards of the Coast president, Chris Cox, who revealed plans for a brand new Transformers themed game next fall. Uh, it's aimed at young teens and the collector and toy audience. That's us. Hey. Uh, and old 44-year-olds who still have not gotten out of their teens. It will come out in September or October. Um, we think Transformers sized... Uh, sorry, we think Transformers are cool, and the game has interesting, u- unique mechanics, he says. All cards are two-sided. That Lucas designed. No, it didn't say that. Uh, all cards are two-sided, oversized, and feel bigger, weightier in your hand. Uh, it should take one or two times to understand how to play. That's what they said about Destiny. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Two decks. One deck's the hero deck, and the other is a powers and abilities deck. You I like Transformers. Uh huh. I think Transformers is really cool, but I can't uh, play more than one. Wow. And the Star Wars is way, way, way cooler than Transformers. No doubt. Just can't even, even think about. Oh boy. You just like threw down. You just threw down to Transformers fans, by the way. <laughs> That's all right. Wow. Okay. I will be interested to see. I'll be interested. Yeah, to we'll see. I thought about, I was thinking about, uh, my dad and I were talking about what IPs would make um, good CCGs. Yeah. And what do you, what do you think? Man, that's a good question. I, you know what? I wanted to like a game. There were, there were two that I picked. I wanted to like a game um, that came out from Upper Deck and it's Versus. And I, it, yeah. I love the idea of superhero stuff. And I don't, you know, it just, it, I couldn't get into it. I wanted, yeah. like I was ready. And that's when Destiny came out. And then I started buying a lot of Destiny. If they use the dice piece of it, like, I man, slap uh, Marvel on there and good night. I think it'd be sweet. Like, it, it, that'd be good. So that's one of the things I like to see. So like a real good uh, comic book game. Oh, you don't play Dice Masters? <laughs> no, do not play Dice Masters. Let's look at that. That's trash. Um, what do you think? Give me one of your IPs you think it would make a good CCG. So the first one I said was if we could get the IP for Scythe and get the artist, yeah, then that could be a freaking awesome CCG where you you have your mechs and yeah. your characters with their pets, mm-hmm. uh, their animals, and all that kind of stuff. That would be that would be wicked. I don't know how it would, how you would do it, yeah, but that would be really cool. Okay, what's your second one? The other one was The Walking Dead. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I mean, I think there's enough to do it. Didn't they have I one? Do they have one? I have no idea. It's probably not a good one if no. they do. Yeah, it's you know those properties are. My tough. dad said Game of Thrones, but we know Game of Thrones yeah, didn't do. do so well. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, it's it's tough. It is really tough. You know, it's funny if um if Destiny with the Star Wars license. This is just my opinion on this, but. If they used real pictures from the movie instead of art, I don't know if I'd like it as much. Yeah, no, I definitely wouldn't. Isn't that weird? Like, why is that? Why wouldn't I like it? But I wouldn't. <laughs> like, I need it to be art. And, like, when it's bad it's art... Seen, it, it's, it's, like, movie stills yeah. are seen as cheesy. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, it's, like, really cheesy. There's no cool Tacky. way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, if I'm collecting a football card, I, if I saw art, I don't want it. I want the real picture. <laughs> how does that make it? That makes no sense. But that's like absolutely how I think most people feel, which is weird about that stuff. But, yeah. Well, very interesting. Um, we'll see what happens. I did, I did say, all right, if I'm coming out with a collectible card game, yeah, I'm stealing season. the idea from Lucas, but instead of dice, what, what it's going to be is it's going to be miniatures. Okay. So you mean hero clicks? No, screw here. Clicks. Okay, but not, how you, but how you not gonna, tacky little miniatures. Well, how are you going to do them? Like what, Legion? No, more like uh, like if I were to do the scythe one, it'd be the same quality as the scythe. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Miniatures, and it'd be like an area control CCG. Interesting. Okay. Well, there you go. You heard it first. I will buy it. I will be a Patreon subscriber. <laughs> I can't wait. I'll fund your Kickstarter, Jay. When uh, it happens. Yeah, my Kickstarter when it comes out. I got right. I got to get in touch with Jamie Stegmaier though. Yeah, who's that? Or is yeah Stegmaier? Is that who did Scythe? 
Yeah. Okay, good. You really like that game, but you don't own it, right? No, I don't. Okay. All right. That's like a $100 board game, though, isn't it? Uh, you can get a cool stuff for 57 That's a good deal. That's a really good deal. Or Very one ancient deal. lightsaber, either way. Or one caution, yeah. maybe. Or force or, <laughs> or sound the alarm. Yeah, sound the alarm. Be good. You Here. can buy like five sound the alarms <laughs> or one scythe game. Jay, we have a question. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think uh, sound the alarm is a good deal. Question for you. All right, so listen, plots are coming, right? You know plots are on their way. Dun, dun, dun. They the could totally games. change the game of Destiny as we know it. And could be stolen, and you could see this in Transformers. Who knows what Lucas is going to do? But here's the, <laughs> here's the question. Here's the question. If uh, my opponent and I are both playing plot cards in our deck, which one would trigger first? For example, if I'm playing Espionage, which is after setup, discard the top card of each deck, and my opponent is playing Stolen Intel, which is after setup, draw a card, who goes first? Does my opponent draw first to resolve his stolen intel plot, or does my espionage resolve first for forcing him to discard? Jay, what's the answer to that question? All right, you know? so I haven't read any of the rules on plot cards. It's going to be different than what we've seen so far. Okay. If I had to guess, whoever controls the battlefield, it's going to, whoever wins the roll off, it's not who wins the roll off. Nope, it's not. It's whoever ends up with the battlefield and decides to go first. That's So that's what the advice right now is. They haven't mentioned it, but so the idea that the simultaneous abilities, so this is from the rules reference guide. It says when two or more triggered abilities meet the trigger conditions at the same time, the player who's resolving them chooses the order they resolve. So it's not just which goes first. It's who chooses which goes first in that case. Um, if more than one player has abilities that are simultaneous, so plot, if you're both playing plots, it's the last thing that would happen, right, during your setup phase. Which one would go first? If they're both simultaneous, it's the player who controls the battlefield, which happens prior to the plot actually taking place. So if I win the roll-off and I give you the battlefield, that means you control it. You don't get the effect of it, but you control it, right? So that would mean you pick which enters the queue first. That's, yep. my, that's my bet on it. I'm sticking with that. But they'll definitely come out with a new, if they haven't already. Have they already came out with the new rules reference with pots and stuff? They did, but they they did. So that's what this is from. Uh, but they oh, okay. did not specifically reference uh, order for plots. Okay. Which I think they're going to do. Yeah, they'll definitely address that. Interesting, though. Can you imagine if you had... So espionage, it seems like lame, right? After setup, discard the top card of each deck. But if you got... Oh, if you discard an ancient lightsaber. Exactly. Exactly. Like I know people, and it's not magic in magic. That'd be two cards because it's a 60 card deck. We're talking 30 card decks here. And so you've already drew it. You, you drew five too. So you drew your five. Yeah. So now you're, you know, you're getting, you're getting really close on that deck. Let's say it's uh what rise again. Let's say you knock out somebody's one off, right? If you do a yep. four speed in that one deck, you one off, it's gone. Great. Good investment of $45. It's in your discard yeah. pile. <laughs> so I don't know. I think these, I think plots, one of the other things in the uh, rules reference guide, it talked about um, color of plots. So the plots that we have released. Now, are you okay? Yeah. Okay, I thought you just dropped. You were like really excited about your <laughs> CCG <laughs> site. I think we almost lost Jay. Like I, I was thinking, what do I do? How would I even help him? If I called the amb- like somebody in Atlanta, like ambulance, they think I was swatting you or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if uh, there's going to be colors in plots, so like it's a blue plot or a red plot or a yellow plot, that doesn't that excite cool. you. That's what it's, so it's in the uh, it's in the rules reference guide. Really? Yep. So I think I think that's foreshadowing. There's going to be colors. I don't know. I just think these are going to have more of an effect than people think. All right. So espionage says uh, discard one card from both decks. Yes, including yours. Yes. Each deck. So, so, so the that downfall is you discard your opponent's like sound the alarm. Yeah, yeah. And you discard your own ancient lightsaber. Listen, we're not going down that road. We're just talking about you know this is about, <laughs> that would suck. That would suck. But you have like you know here. All right, here's one Jay for you. We're getting over an hour, but listen, this is good stuff. You haven't been here. I'm trying to get you back in the game. You uh, one of the things that. Uh, that, that drives me nuts, and I, I do it too, but I don't play as much as you, is when people get their little deck and they go to play, 
and they do the role. And so you win the role, right? And then it's, am I going to take the battlefield or am I going to take the shield? And they go back and forth. Like that's, it's like an analogy I would give in that is like, that's golf. The ball's on the tee. You know, you're going to hit the ball. Like you, that is, that is going to happen every single game with your deck. Like you got to know the answer to that question before you even sit down. You know what I mean? Like, am I going to take the battlefield no matter what it is? My own. Well, if I it's, win it? it's, it's different against every deck. So t- help me, help me understand that. Like you if know, I'm playing against emo kids and they're using the Empress Throne Room, I might not want them to have that. If what? It, yeah, but you, you picked a. You have your own battlefield that you picked, right? Yeah. Well, if your deck is most times, I'm going to take my shields. Really? So, like winning the roll off, it's like deferring the kickoff in football. Like you don't want you want shields most of the time. Yes, but not every time. If you're playing against Pomaz, you don't want them to have Empress Throne Room. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got so, you. All right. It's, it's it's different against certain decks. Okay. And, like, if you're playing against Palpatine, you got to pick one that's not going to benefit him because he's always going to claim first. Right, right. Playing against a mill deck, you might not want to get milled for two every turn. So that's why you bring one that you're okay having be part of the game and just take it every time if you win. Yep. I don't know. That's it's one of those things like you know, yes, you don't know what your opponent's going to play, but you know what you're bringing, and if you win it, you could almost have that decision in your mind all ready to go. But that well, makes sense. Well, Mister Chip's case, get both shields right. and you get to choose your own battlefield. Exactly. So. All right. Well, we've 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 talked that about that enough about battlefields. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, and we had one uh, email came in. This is from Uriah. Uh, he said, first off, you can't sell shoes. Man, they're just, everyone talks like you, Jay. I love it. But you can talk destiny. Uh, never listened to a podcast before. Didn't like the idea of it. Thank you. That's, uh, again, that's what my mom says. But I love you guys. Anywho, for droid commandos, it will work decent in a multiplayer deck. Also, he's got a trailblazing deck that he thought of. Here it is, Jay. You ready? It's mm-hmm. E. Kylo, Magna Guard, Servant of the Dark Side. He says it's got nice. potential. No one sees it coming. Uh, he's considered becoming a Patreon. Hey, thank you for taking time to write us. By the way, it's questions at discard to reroll.com. You can also head over to the Twitter, and that's a discard to reroll, T O reroll. And, uh, and also, it's the website. Jay doesn't use the websites anymore because he says I'm old because young people don't have websites, but it's discard to reroll.com. So, Jay, you're not going to go to your. So, we've determined you're not going to go to the regionals on Saturday. I and, might. Okay. And you're not going to tell us what deck you're going to play? I don't even know. Okay. Would you- I've not even thought about, like, I had last last regionals, I practiced a bunch. This one, I'm just going in willy-nilly. Yeah. Well, where Where is it again, you said? Panama City, Flora. Okay. Where they are getting snow right now, apparently, oh, because it's like negative 5,000 degrees outside. It's bad. It is bad. <laughs> and then, uh, and then maybe we don't know because FFG hasn't told us that there's something going on Friday for a release party next week. Maybe it's next, actually Thursday, isn't the eleventh Thursday? I should, uh, I should probably look that up. No, 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 it's a Thursday. Eleventh yeah. is a Thursday. I was yeah. They drop they drop their stuff on Thursdays. Okay, so something the pre release will be on a Saturday if they do a party. Okay. Um, and great news. So I'm all excited to go get my cards afterwards. It's going to be at Just Games, by the way, in Penfield. So if you're there, uh, it's great. I don't know how many he's getting, but I put in an order for two. Uh, and Scythe. And yeah, I'll pick up and my copy. Pick up. I don't have people to play it with. I would do that in a second. I, Jay, you have no idea. If I could turn a camera on right now, I'm surrounded by board games. I'm looking at a new copy that my wife got me of Secret Hitler right here. That game is amazing. Nice. I have nobody to play it with. See? Just wait till your children get a little bit older. I know. Hey, kids, come around. I have a game. It's called Secret Hitler. You all love it. <laughs> Perfect. I will be arrested. There'll be a CPS call for me. Um, yeah. So that's gonna. So my. So I'm all excited. I've got money set aside. You know, I want to make sure I have these cards so I can bring them to the audience. And uh, that's my excuse. And my wife's getting her hair done next Thursday. Very nice. Yeah. Me, it's like a five minute deal. Super cuts. Her, it's a four and a half hour deal. <laughs> what are you gonna do? And uh, probably, probably my and a hundred, two hundred dollars yeah, later. Two boxes of Destiny, by the way, are way cheaper than that haircut. So, but uh, <laughs> Jay, I appreciate it. you just got back from vacation, and I know that you were tired, and you still came on the show, and uh, I really appreciate you doing that. 
Nah, no problem, dude. I'm always ready to rock and roll. So people can find you on the tube of you, right? And you're going to be doing some streams. Are you going to be back up streaming? What's, what can we expect from Double Blinks in the next week? Probably more drafts. And now that Legacies has dropped, a lot more Legacies gameplay. That's going to be freaking fun. If we can do, man, I would do like next weekend. Why don't we do like a Legacies draft if that comes out? I, I didn't see that as one of the choices in those packs. Oh, yeah, that's not on the draft thing. But we could still randomize uh, our own Legacies cards if we wanted to. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. All right, let me see if we can. But so if you're interested, if you're interested, let me do, I'm going to do a post. And we've got our Discord, right? So people can can express some interest there. I'd love to be able to do some of that. Next, we got to really take this up a notch next weekend when it comes out. Yeah. Let's celebrate yep. this thing. Put some stuff online. I have like four things on my YouTube channel. It's so sad. <laughs> Maybe we put some stuff up there. But Jay, seriously, I appreciate it. And uh, check him out. And although he's not here, Sir Christopher is off off the rails. Off the rails. I tuned, I love Friday Night Dice. All of a sudden, I click on a link and he's eating a wheel of cheese. So he has <laughs> totally gone bonkers, but some great stuff on there. Um, so make sure you check out Sir Christopher. All the links to all that stuff is over on the website. And our Twitter at uh, at discard to reroll. So f- for Jay, I'm Chip. And remember, may all of your rerolls be special ones. We'll see you next week.